What's up everybody? It's Three Wheel Khalil. And no, the title of this video is not clickbait. After nearly three years of ownership, thousands of miles ridden, and countless memories made, I've decided to sell my Can-Am Riker. Stay tuned. <laughs> Now, before I tell you about all the reasons that led me to sell my Can-Am Riker, I want to first talk a little bit about what made it so special to me. And it truly was very special to me. I mean, it was my first motorcycle. I had never ridden a motorcycle in general until I took my uh, three-wheel education course or the three-wheel BRC. And prior to that time, I had never ridden anything two wheels, three wheels with the motor at all. Uh, during that course, I had to chance to ride a few different uh, Can-Am models, uh, Can-Am Riker, Can-Am Spider F3, and a Can-Am Spider RT. And, you know, I kind of fell in love at that moment with the hobby and, and, and thought, okay, I think this is really something that I want to do, something that I can do, uh, and something that I, I feel confident that I can learn well and, and enjoy. Um, so it was kind of at that point that I was like, okay, I'm all in. I'm going to look for a Riker. I'm going to go buy one. And... When I bought my Riker down in Florida, down in West Palm Beach, uh, I mean, it, it kind of just everything clicked. You know, I, I got to ride it during my lunch breaks, uh, after work, going to visit friends, and it just was awesome, man. It was the experience that I was looking for was that feeling of the open road, that feeling of the wind, you know, blowing past your helmet. Uh, you know, it's just feeling the, the power, the Riker, the raw feeling. It, it was special. And... It was my first time experiencing any piece of that motorcycle open road kind of life. So the the Riker enabled me to do a lot of that and I'm, I'm very grateful for it. And like I've said before, when the original Can-Am Spider GSs and RSs came out, I was totally blown away. The, the idea that they pioneered with the on-road reverse trike was so impressive to me at the time and I wanted one so bad when I was in middle school and high school and when it came to the point where you know I was out in the real world working making money and the Can-Am Riker came out and it fit so well with the style of riding that I wanted to do with what I could afford as a you know secondary vehicle it just spoke to me perfectly and when I was able to find one at a good price with good warranty still left on it I mean it was a match made in heaven so it, it, it kind of fulfilled that childhood dream of mine to own a Can-Am Spider slash now Riker, um, and, it, and it really did that very well for me. And I was able to create this YouTube channel. Uh, I kind of, you know, played around with the idea and was like, oh, you know, what would I call it? And then Three Wheel Khalil just rolled off the tongue, and I just went with it. You know, I, I mean, obviously it's my name, but uh, it just it just fit and. Being able to create this channel and communicate with so many different types of people and, you know, feel like I'm resonating with a lot of different types of people and people understanding, you know, the things that I'm trying to put out into the world, which are, you know, just positive vibes and riding and enjoying and riding your own ride, and, you know, living for yourself in that type of a kind of free open road kind of concept but also being able to listen and be a part of the community and hear what other people have to think and see what other ideas are out there. And I've met, you know, countless super cool people through having this channel, through having, you know, my Instagram and, and being able to just be a part of the Can-Am community. So uh, in that sense, the Riker exceeded every expectation, right? Because uh, I didn't really expect to, to be such a big part of this community. And, uh, and it's been really awesome. Now, in case you're wondering what that means for this channel, Three Wheel Khalil is not going anywhere. I will still be producing videos here. Uh, and they're still going to be on Three Wheel Motorcycle content. Now, you'll have to stay tuned until my next video to figure out what is replacing my Can-Am Riker but that is coming very soon. 
And if you want to find out about my new purchase as soon as possible, you should probably go ahead and follow me on Instagram. The link is in the description below. I often post more frequent updates to Instagram, so you may just get a sneak peek of what I bought a little bit before it arrives here on YouTube. So if you're interested in that, feel free to go follow me on Instagram. The link's in the description. But without further ado, let us get to my top five reasons why I sold my Can-Am record. So my top five reasons are in no particular order, but I am gonna count them down for ease of reference. And my number five reason is my riding habits have changed due to me moving to Georgia. Um, when I first got my Riker, I was living in South Florida. Most of my drives were around town to get lunch. Um, I was working home uh, from home full time at this point. And it, you know, most of the things I was doing were 15, 20 minute rides. And it was kind of able to be like something I was doing more often than driving my car at point in time because most of my trips were shorter trips, you know, unless I was going out of town with my wife, it was, oh, I could ride to go see my friend, I'd ride to go pick up lunch, I'd ride to go grab a couple groceries. It, it fit all of those needs, whereas once I moved to Georgia, um, I was commuting downtown uh, Atlanta for work, uh, driving sometimes upward of an hour, and the highways that you take in Georgia really aren't super comforting, uh, I'd say, to ride on during like any sort of traffic time on a motorcycle. Uh, you really don't see many motorcycles on the road during that time, uh, whereas Florida, even during quote unquote rush hour traffic in the area I was in, in South Florida, West Palm Beach area, it wasn't crazy. And if you wanted to avoid it, it was so easy to avoid it because that area was such like a, you know, small towns built up on like grid, a grid system. You can easily just take a different route that would bypass, you know, the big highway. Whereas uh, it's very difficult to do the same thing here in Atlanta if you're trying to get to Atlanta. When you're outside of the city, it's a lot easier to get around. Um, but when you're trying to go from the suburbs to the city, there's, you know, only a couple of main veins that take you in. And so it kind of excluded my, my Riker from that, uh, except for like a couple holidays when nobody was on the road. I would ride my Riker just because it was an opportunity to kind of get get it on the highways that I would never normally take it on. Uh, but that that changed a lot in terms of you know how I was riding, in terms of frequency, where I was riding, and it, it kind of kept my Riker inside the garage a little bit more than I was riding, as well as the topography of Georgia is a little different, right? So you have more hills, you've got more windy roads, and the Riker does well in those situations, uh, but you, you can see some of the kind of cracks in the matrix, right? Um, in terms of like the, the power that it takes to steer in the twisties and stuff like that. The Riker can definitely handle all of that, no problem. It's just the effort that it takes to do that compared to maybe some of the power assisted models in the spider line and stuff like that. So it definitely, left me a little wanting in some of those situations and so it kind of piqued my interest a little bit to look elsewhere into possible replacements for my Riker. So that kind of directly leads into my number four reason which is the cost to upgrade my Riker to where I would want it to be and I've always kind of taken an OEM plus approach to upgrading my Riker which is you know little mods that you could see K&M either doing on a future model or you could be fooled into believing that they were you know a factory option from the beginning because they are kind of so generally applicable whereas you know some things are a little bit more out there that you couldn't see the wide community of K&M riders enjoying or or being you know readily available from Can-Am. So I've always kind of tried to stick in that OEM plus bubble uh, of, you know, little things that are just more reasonable, right? Um, one for resale, two for just, I, I kind of like things to be, you know, somewhat simple. And I do trust the manufacturers to engineer, you know, something of quality. And I don't try to re-engineer everything that was, you know, painstakingly engineered for years and years, right? 
Um, whereas there are things that I do think that if you want to kind of do something maybe outside of the traditional scope of what the Riker was made to do, that you do need to upgrade. Uh, such as, you know, no matter if you're talking rally or, you know, a 900-600, like this suspension. It's something that you're going to possibly want to upgrade if you're going to be doing long-term touring. If you're a heavier person like myself, if you want to do two up as a heavier person like myself, you're probably going to be looking into Elka suspension. You're going to be looking into, you know, uh, beefing up certain components. And, and to get there, especially if you want a quality Elka suspension setup, it's pretty expensive. Not only expensive for the... Um, equipment but if you're gonna have to pay somebody to do it then that's expensive and you know if I'm gonna talk about you know maybe two to three thousand extra dollars spent on a motorcycle that I paid ten thousand dollars for now we're starting to creep up closer and closer to the territory of the more expensive spiders that come standard with a higher level of certain equipment like the Brembo brakes like a more solid frame in general, like power assisted steering, like more technology. So you, you kind of start to tiptoe that line that it does it make sense to spend as much on your model or does it make sense to start looking toward a model that maybe was built from the factory with the things that you are looking for and that would be warranted directly from Can-Am. So that brings me to my third reason which is warranty and repair cost. When I purchased my Riker Rally 2019, I purchased it in January of 2020. And luckily it only had about 300 miles on it. I think the previous owner had purchased it late in 2019. And therefore when I called the BRP k and to verify the warranty, I actually had most of a year left on that warranty. So within that time, you can extend the warranty or you can, you know, just use the warranty as normal. So I still had a lot of time with that warranty and I ended up needing to use it. Um, I had a small issue with the coolant tank early on, uh, kind of at the seam where it was starting to uh, leak a little bit of coolant. I had that taken a look at and repaired early on in my ownership due to having the warranty. Now, as your ownership time extends and as your using your Riker or whatever motorcycle for that matter you're going to run into things that need to be taken care of of course you've got your normal maintenance like oil changes but also there are things that break down over time depending on you know the the bike and you know, the parts used and having a warranty gives you that extra peace of mind and so after having my Riker for a little bit and moving out of the warranty period and having it almost three years and especially using it for what I do, which is to create content on this channel, it also made a little bit of sense to start thinking about possibly getting a new motorcycle that has a brand new warranty that gives me that peace of mind that I'm not gonna be coming out of pocket if something big happens, especially while the Riker, luckily, and all Can-Am Spider models hold their value actually really well. And you can resell to a dealership and make most of the money that you spent. And if you sell in the private market, you, you might be able to get almost everything that you spent on it back. And so that, that gives you a pretty good incentive to possibly want to upgrade to the newer models for minimal cost. If you can, you know, get your Riker or Spider sold for a really good value and still keep yourself within Can-Am's warranty. But it also depends on kind of going back to reason number four, which is, well, how much have you put into upgrades? How much have you done outside of the scope of the motorcycle? If you've done a lot, then that value proposition starts to get lower and lower. But if you kept it close to stock, you've spent on, you know, cosmetic things, things that you enjoy, uh, that you've used and that were, you know, lower in cost, then when it comes time for you to want to trade in for those kind of reasons, it's not going to be as big of a hit to you. Whereas if you spend a lot on suspension that you're not going to get your money back unless you sell in the private market, then you're going to feel a lot more locked in to what you have. And so I had not done that yet. And uh, therefore, I was able to get a lot of my initial investment back, uh, basically over 80% um, of my initial investment back. And to me, that's a pretty good cost for quote unquote renting a Riker for over three or over two years, almost three years. 
And uh, now going back to my reason three, which is that warranty and repair cost, I'm looking at getting a new motorcycle that will kind of keep me out of the weeds for at least the first two years, maybe three years. And I can extend going on past that if I, you know, desire to own that motorcycle for longer. Moving on to my number two reason, it's comfort and comfort for myself when I'm riding and doing longer rides, but also comfort for when my wife would like to come along with me. And the Riker provided very good comfort for me on short rips around town. Um, I had the BRP comfort seat and I liked it. I thought that it was a nice premium product. However, when I did push that seat to an hour, hour and a half, two hours of travel time in one sitting, I definitely started to get uncomfortable. Um, you know, I definitely was starting to feel the pain in my butt and it, it wasn't super pleasant. So there were definitely other options that you could go even higher than the seat that I purchased. But again, it brings us back to number four with, you know, how comfortable was I going above and beyond to purchase something that maybe, again, I'm not going to see that value back in unless I'm going to keep this motorcycle for years and years and years. And it just kind of keeps pushing me to that, you know, eventual question of do I need to purchase something else? Do I need something that kind of fits more, checks more of my boxes straight out the factory door? And uh, that led me to kind of look on the market and see if it was time to let go of my Riker. So finally, we're here at my last reason, which is the Riker's lack of built-in storage and or storage in general. And it kind of ties into a couple of the other reasons like four and five, which are the cost to upgrade it to where I wanted it and the you know fact that my riding habits have changed since I moved to Georgia. Like I said, when I lived in Florida, I was riding primarily for recreation, um, for lunch when I was working from home and going to see friends. Whereas in Georgia, um, I was doing a lot of driving into downtown Atlanta and the Riker just wasn't what I wanted for that. Now, I'm very happy that I have recently changed jobs and now work a lot closer to home and my commute is now something that I want to do on my motorcycle. And so that has, again, kind of pushed me to look at, do I need to upgrade the storage so that I can bring the things I need, like my laptop, my lunch, and all those things, or do I possibly need to look at a motorcycle that has those type of things built in, or do I want to look at building a system for the Riker that, you know, would fit my needs? And not only commuting, but also longer trips. And during that process, I kind of decided for myself, um, that I wanted something that was a little bit more plug and play, a little bit more that I could just, you know, throw my laptop in there, lock it, know that it's gonna be drying out of the elements. Because yeah, I could get a shad bag and hang it off the side, but to me that changes the look of the Riker a lot. I, I, I think the shad bags don't look, you know, bad, but I don't think it kind of looks as sleek as the Riker does without it. Um, so I wanted something, you know, to fill that box for me without changing the natural look of the motorcycle um, but in that process I was definitely looking at building what I would call the ultimate Riker road trip kit uh, basically giving you storage for you know a lunch meal on the road um, a way to pack on a larger waterproof duffel bag or backpack and a way to secure that all down and be able to swap it out just like you do anything else on the Riker for the most part, right? So that you're not married to this like you are with some of the other luggage solutions like the third party, like big luggage cases and you know stuff like that. This is still something very modular. And so to that end, I have been using the Link top plate for the longest while. And I reached out to k and and they were, you know, super accommodating as they always are and sent me out some of their newest accessories to try out, which were um, their Link 10 liter case and then the insulated uh, bag that goes on the inside of that to carry like a water bottle, some lunch, a sandwich, chips, and keep all of that stuff at the temperature that you had it at before you left. And then their uh, Link I guess they call it like their Riker tie-down kit or something like that. I forget the name, but you'll see it in the description below. 
where it basically gives you kind of like this little side frame so that the bag that you uh, strap down there kind of has some structure and doesn't slide around too much. And then it gives you the ability to hook in your cargo net onto this frame so that you can tie down bigger items. So my thought was, let's put those things together. Let's put that 10 liter case with the insulated layer on the inside and then the tie down kit on the outside of that so that you could put a waterproof backpack or waterproof duffel and you could build out this kit that I would call the ultimate road trip kit. And all of that sits on that link uh, top plate and all you have to do is pull that link top plate off and you're you're good to go you can throw back on the back seat you can throw back uh you know like the mono seat stuff and and you you don't even have to to think about it again but when you want to go on a road trip you have the ability to kind of have this modular setup that keeps you um fully ready for 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 whatever and i built that out i still decided that i think it was time to sell my Riker. so my loss is your game and if you stuck around this long, I am going to be doing a giveaway for that kit in the this video. If you leave a comment saying where you would go if you were taking a Riker road trip, you'll be entered to win that kit. Um, so again, just comment on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Comment on the video and say where you would go if you were taking a Riker road trip. And in about a month... I'll put the exact date in the description below, but in about a month, I will choose the winner. So, again, guys, those are my top five reasons. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, you'll see me back soon with something different with three wheels. And uh, hopefully, you'll enjoy the next chapter of this three wheel Khalil content. And uh, I'm excited to bring it to you guys. And hopefully, uh, I'd love to hear all of your reasons why you love your Riker, why you kept it, why you sold it, uh, why it's worked for you perfectly, you know, because all of my reasons relate to my life and, you know, the things that I want out of my Riker. Uh, none of my reasons make the Riker a bad purchase. You know, it's just, it's all about what you want at the time. And for the time that I owned my Riker, it was everything that I wanted. And uh, now I'm at a slightly different point in my life and, uh, you know, I want some different things. And so I'm excited to get them out of a new motorcycle. So, again, I'm really thankful for this journey with you guys. Sorry for the long video. Kind of takes a little while to expound upon my thoughts on all these different little pieces on why I love it or loved it and why I decided to sell it. So, again, thanks if you guys got this far and you'll be rewarded if you drop a comment down in the the uh, video below and just say where you would go on a Riker road trip and I will pick one winner to get that kit that I built. Unfortunately, it's limited to US and Canada because it will be a little bit to ship all that stuff to you guys, but just let me know um, and uh, remember, life's more fun on three wheels. Always will be. Catch you in the next one. Peace.